In the last video, we talked about what errors can be picked up on a LG chart. And to pick up those errors, we need to create the right chart. This is an error that is happening in many of the laboratories. And so, we will see how wrong charts can make your whole concept of QCs invalid. So, there are two reasons for more data points to lie farther than the mean, be it systematic errors or be it random errors. And we are just saying a change in the accuracy or precision will make systematic changes in precision and shifting accuracy. These could uh, make uh, more than 5 percent of the measurements lie farther from your plus or minus 2 SD points. You recap on the Gaussian. And we know that only 2.5 percent maximum points are allowed on both sides of the Gaussian curve and for 5 percent on either side, 2.5 percent on your plus side, 2.5 percent beyond your 2 SD limits on your negative side. Together 5 percent plus or minus 2 SD that is all allowed. If it goes beyond that 2 plus or minus 2 SD you see more than 5 percent. What could be the reasons apart from problem in your analytical system? The problem could be the mean and or SD are not assigned correctly on the LJ chart. If the assigned values are not the same as the observed values and more than 5 percent of the measurements will exceed plus or minus 2 SD. We will see how this happens and we are talking of a scenario where the laboratory is assigning the mean or the standard deviation depending upon the QC insert. This is one problem that is seen to happen in many labs. The manufacturer's mean and SD are assigned on the chart which may not be suitable in your laboratory because the mean that you are observing could be different from the mean that has been assigned. And similarly, the SD that you have put in there may not be what the SD that you are observing. Let us look at the reasons. These are the two main reasons which render QC rules ineffective. Assigned mean is not the same as the observed mean. Assigned SD is not mean same as the observed SD. When you say assigned, you mean whatever you have put on your graph is different from what you are observing. That is what the concept is trying to explain. Let us look at this slide. This is a control that we are running. Your assigned mean is here. This is your assigned mean. This is your minus 1 SD, plus 1 SD, minus 2 SD, plus 2 SD, minus 3 SD, plus 3 SD and you are looking at your data points here. Your data points are falling all over here over a period of 20 or so analysis. Your data points are falling here. What is it that you are observing? You have your assigned mean here, but actually observed mean is somewhere here. So, there is an anomaly here. Your Gaussian you are expecting is here, but the Gaussian that is developing is there. And what is the consequence? You are going to make all your interpretations with reference to this mean and this 1 SD, this 2 SD and this 3 SD. And what do you see? There are multiple points falling beyond the 2 SD limits and there are even points crossing the 3 SD limits. So, you would think oh this is a systematic error that is happening to the system and there are so many outliers, there are so many 1, 2 S violations and there are 1, 3 S violations. Everything is shifted towards one side, but what exactly is happening? These are all outliers that you would want to consider and reject those runs and you are thinking of a systematic error here where everything is shifted to one side and there are multiple false rejections happening all because you did not assign the correct mean. Your mean should have been this, whereas you are interpreting your entire QC runs with reference to this mean and this is creating uh, your false rejections and you think your analytical system is at fault when it is not. Your system what is at fault is you are assigned the wrong values on the chart. Now, let us look at this slide. You have an analyte for which the mean is 93 uh, assigned at 93. 
and standard deviation assigned is 3. So, 93 mean standard deviation 96, 99, 102 like that. And you are trying to run your QCs with this mean and this standard deviation and you are finding this kind of a graph getting plotted over a period of time and you have not done anything about it. Okay, so actually what are you observing? Your observed mean is not 93 because all your clustering is happening here which means actually your observed mean is 90 and it is assigned at 93. So, what are the problems that you are observing because of this? Your observed mean is 90 and your assigned mean is 93. So, what happens here? Look at this. So, if you are looking with 90 as the mean, is there any rejection that should have happened and any kind of false acceptance which is happening? Let us look at this. So, if this is your mean, how would you interpret the graph? Where does this point fall with reference to this mean? What is this point? 1ST, 2ST, this becomes a 1-2S warning. These are all warnings if you are looking with reference to your 93 mean. But if you are looking with reference to 90 mean, these are all good runs. And on the converse, now you look at, look at this point here. If this is your mean, this is your 1ST, this is your 2SD, this is a 1, 2S warning which you will not even look at because you are thinking it is a good run. You would not look at this 1, 2S warning, you will not look at your other level of QC and will not reject. So, what happens here is that these are all true accept values where this overlap happens. These will become your false reject. Anything for coming here you will reject falsely thinking these are wrong runs and in this region you will accept wrong acceptance. So, there are false acceptance and false rejections happening if you do not define your mean correctly and hope that you understand this concept. We will see one more slide here. Look at this one. You have an assigned the mean as 87 and your assigned SD is 3 and your observed mean is 90 and what is happening? All your runs are clustering around here therefore, the mean is 90. What about this run? If you are looking with reference to 80 as the mean, this is your 1 SD, 2 SD, 3 SD, you are rejecting this run because it is going beyond 96 which is your 3 SD and you would reject it. But is it actually a rejection? It does it require rejection? No, because if you have your 90 is your actually your mean is 90. If you are looking at from with reference to 90, this is your 1 ST, this is your 2 ST, this is only a 1 2 S and it is only a warning rule. So, this is what will happen if you do not refine your mean correctly. So, if this is where we are, this is your mean observed. But this is what you are expecting, this is you are thinking you are going to be here and but you are actually here. So, this is we are talking on the Gaussian, these areas will become your false rejects and these areas will become your false acceptance. False acceptance is dangerous because you are not seeing rule violations because you have assigned your mean wrongly. And false rejections are bad because you are for no reason rejecting good runs and wasting resources. So, this is your importance of assigning your mean correctly. Now, let us look at the next scenario where your assigned SD is different from your observed SD is another reason how you render your QC rules ineffective. You know all the rules, you are running QCs, two levels, three levels but you have not assigned your values correctly and everything is now meaningless. Look at this slide. This is your assigned mean for an analyte. This is your 1SD minus 1SD plus, 2SD minus, 2SD plus and 3SD. Beyond this, it is not depicted on this. So, this is your 1SD, this is your 2SD, this is the Gaussian that you are looking for a little wider because 3SD needs to be covered. And when you are analyzing, all your data points are now falling in this manner. So, what does it say? All your data points in your 68 percent area? No, that is not how Gaussian is defined. Gaussian says 68 percent should be within your 1 SD, 100 percent cannot be in your 1 SD. So, this is what this graph is showing. All your 100 percent is sitting in your 1 SD except one point. So, there has to be something wrong here. SD assigned is wrong. 
So, if you actually assign your SD correctly to capture 68 percent, your standard deviation is pretty much half of what it you have assigned here. So, your observed standard deviation go like this. This is your one standard deviation and this is your two standard deviation and this is your observed standard deviation, your th 3 SD would be somewhere here. According to this, this could be a 1, 2 S violation, but you would never see that because for you, this is not even, con this is entire thing is your 1 S, this is your 2 S and this is considered as a normal point, whereas it is a 1, 2 S warning and you would never know because according to this actual observed variation, look at this once again, where the, the points are falling. So, if you are assigning your standard deviations correctly, this is your 1 plus 1 as standard deviation, minus 1 as standard deviation, plus 2 as, minus 2 as. See this point? This point is outside of your minus 2 as standard deviation and you would never notice because you have not assigned your standard deviation correctly. And once again, we are putting the uh, standard deviations there. So, you are expecting a graph like this, but your graph actually is falling like this. So, therefore, you need to be mindful of your Gaussian curve, where is it falling and you need to assign your standard deviations correctly. A point here, how would you interpret? You would never realize that it is a 3SD violation, your 3S standard deviation is here and therefore, you are not seeing that violation and therefore, you are accepting it falsely. So, this is your mean observed. And if you are looking at a graph that you might have in your lab and this is a very common error that we see in all kinds of machines, especially in humidology machines, you see clustering of all around your mean and everybody thinks it is a right way to look at a graph, but no, it is not. Can you have your 100 percent of your data falling between your this area? This area can only contain 68 percent. So, that means this is a wrong graph. It is not in a Gaussian. You cannot have a Gaussian with everything sitting in, in this in your plus and minus 1 SD region. So, what are you doing? Only this much is your true accepts beyond anything that you are falsely accepting readings because you have not defined your standard deviation correctly. So, in this case, if you put it as a Gaussian, this is where you are, this is your standard deviation observed and you have assigned it so much larger and therefore, you are accepting a lot of false values. These are all false accepts. You cannot accept these values and just because you did not assign the SD observe as on your graph and you have assigned some other value, therefore, you end up accepting a lot of values those should have been rejected. And now, you are coming to another case scenario, mean is 90 and standard deviation assigned is 2 and, but your observed standard deviation is more than what you have assigned. What happens? For no reason, you will be rejecting runs. So, this is your true accept and these are all your false reject because you have assigned your standard deviation too narrowly. So, you need to be sensible when you are assigning your standard deviation because if you are assigning it too narrowly, there is no reason that you should be rejecting good runs. There is much less than 68 in here and you are for these are all should have been part of your 95, but they are all going beyond your 99.7 percent because you have assigned your standard deviations too narrow. So, this to, to put that on a Gaussian, this is your standard deviation observed, this is your standard deviation assigned. So, all these will become false rejects. To summarize it, you are going to look at all the four case scenarios. Your system is stable here and your system is unstable here. So, when your system is stable, there is no rule violation, you are fine. Even if you have assigned, these are all your true accepts here. Your system is unstable and there is a significant change and you are not seeing that change because your rules have been violated, your mean is not been assigned well, your standard deviation has been too broad and you end up having false accept. System is unstable, no QC rule violation has occurred because your start was wrong, you go and do the false accept, very bad for the patient because you are going to report wrong results. On the other hand, your system is stable and rule violation has occurred and you do it false rejections because your standard deviations was, were too narrow. You do too uh, false rejection and you are just wasting money, time, effort, everything. So, that is your 
again inefficiency because you have defined your standard deviations to be too narrow. And this is the best case scenario when there are true rejections happening, system is unstable and the QC rule violation has occurred and you begin investigation and troubleshooting. This is the way you have to use your QC correctly because you have assigned your graph correctly, all your values are done correctly. So, this is the actual way in which you need to monitor your QC. So, now let us have a little bit of a quiz here. Let us see this graph is actually from one of the papers which are published. When you are looking at it, do you think this is an error? This is level 1 control values and suddenly at some point on the 18th run onwards, you are seeing some kind of a fluctuation and then you are looking at the graph and say, okay, it is okay because it is within the 2SD limit. So, it is there is no violation happening, but was this correct to start with? No, because you cannot have all your runs sitting in the 1SD region. If you are looking at it in on a Gaussian, all your points are coming in the 1SD region. This is not how a Gaussian happens. You cannot have your 100 percent of your run sitting and the violations from there you would think they are normal. It is within the normal Gaussian not because you did not start, you did not have a correct graph. Let us look at some examples, some dummy examples. The previous one was a real example. Let us look at some dummy examples. Assume this is a right chart, the mean is 72 and you are looking at a graph and what are the rejections here? You have a 2, 2 s here within a cross run 2, 2 s and you would want to reject it and you would want to do corrective action. Here again you have a 1, 2 s and I am assuming this is level 1 and I am looking at level 3, 1 more 1, 2 s. I know that is a within run 2, 2 s and I reject my run and then you look at the other things and they are all kind of subscribing to the rules. So, I am okay with this chart, but what if I plot this, this same chart, the same readings 70, 68, this is the same numbers here but the mean here is 67, it is at the 1 SD 67. So, what happens to the chart? There was a 2, 2 S violation here. Do I see it here? No, I do not see it here because this is now acceptable to me because it is not 2 S, it is minus 1 SD, this is minus 2 SD and I am accepting those runs because I think there is no rule violation here, whereas there is a clear rule violation here. And look at this point and assume this is now a 3s and it is a violation. If this was there was no root 2s here, assume the other level was ok and there was no need for me to reject it and there was no need and then here it is becoming a 1 3s because the, the graph is now shifting upwards there is for no reason. So, I am not doing a false reject there. Okay, This is just assumptions because this is a dummy graph. Here I said if I am looking at the other L1, L2 also and there was a 1, 2 S violation, I would reject it. Suppose there was no 1, 2 S violation and it was a normal run and here it is just a 1, 2 S and I would go and reject it assuming it is a 1, 3 S. So, it is a false rejections, false acceptance. So, these are the problems if you assign your mean wrong. And let us look at this graph again and same numbers, it is a dummy, this is the right one. There is a rejection happening here, there is a warning happening here. But I am assigning my SDs to broad. Look at this 72, 77, 82, those so 5 is your correct SD. What am I doing here? 72, 82, I am putting 10 per SD and what happens? Every point is clustered and there is no rejection. Your graph will not indicate anything. It is a totally meaningless graph and this is a very, very common practice. I said that earlier also, especially in the hematology analyzers, there are no outliers ever because the standard deviation assigned is so high and it will not pick up anything. So, this is what will happen if you assign your standard deviations to high. And the next we will see, again this is the right graph, I am carrying the same graph forward. 72, 77, 82, but instead of here that I am putting as 2.5, 72, 74.5 and you are carrying it on like that and what are you seeing? You are seeing too many 
false rejections it is you are looking at a graph and you are thinking oh my god there is so much of imprecision whereas there is nothing there because you have assigned too narrow the st that has been assigned is too narrow and again it's not subscribing to your gaussian rules are you seeing 68% of the runs here no you are maybe seeing maybe 30 to 40 percent of the runs here the rest of them are all going outside there is no imprecision you have just started off using a wrong graph so these are the problems that happen when you are assigning wrong numbers on your graph so mean assigned and sd assigned mean observed and sd observed assigned versus observed may or may not be based on a fact Values are applied on an LJ chart. Sources often choices other than the current observed performance include past data points before a change, cumulative values, package insert values. These are the problems when you are having assigned values which is not your observed values. But when you actually put that observed values on your chart, if these are mathematically calculated using data points. These are facts and answers where we are in terms of accuracy and precision of the method and specific to your methods performance and that is how you have to put your values your assigned values should be what is your observed values and just don't assign your values using some kind of a source most often it is the the values assigned are by many labs the package insert values and these kinds of errors can happen if you use it without verification so when do you create a new lg chart a new lg chart has to be created with every qc law change that is one situation where a new lg chart is mandated but there could be other reasons also when there is a major component change to the instrument sometimes it may warrant a new lj chart but this needs to be done very carefully because if the values are shifting you wouldn't want the whole system to shift so you have to study this before you decide whether you want to create a new chart give it a few days and understand the trends and if the trend is persisting that could be because of the component change and there you may need to change your mean and then start off on a new chart and also in change in the testing process which is usually manufacturer directed and in these situations you may even want to look at your reference values simultaneously when I am talking about reference values biological reference values if that kind of trends happen you may want to look at that simultaneously and so I hope in this video you have understood the concepts of having the right chart with reference to both the mean and the standard deviation what are the bad effects if you have wrong means assigned and what are the problems when if you have uh, wrong standard deviations assigned thank you